This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I'm going to continue the journey with this ADS1256 based data acquisition module. So in my most recent video related to this project, I showed you how I built uh, this device and how the almost uh, final product looks like. And in this video I'm going to show you probably the very last iteration of this board and of the device. So I want to guide you to the changes that I made on the PCB and also I want to show you what these two PCBs uh, do. So let's have a quick recap based on the board that I completed last time. So actually the board is uh, almost unchanged and uh, the things are the following here. So if we start from this side we have a USB-C connector, you can see, so I tried to use the most modern or up-to-date uh, connectors. And then uh, the microcontroller is a RP2040 microcontroller. It's a high performance uh, microcontroller. So it can drive the uh, device, the ADS1256, uh, just fine. We have an onboard uh, flash memory. I use the largest one, which is, I think, 16 megabytes. But actually, you can change this and you can go down to 2 megabytes and you are safe uh, with uh, everything. And then here we have a voltage reference uh, chip and a op-amp, which is just the voltage follower in this uh, configuration. And then uh, through the voltage follower, we feed uh, the uh, reference voltage to the device, to the AD converter. And then I have this big uh, connector here, which I really like because it comes with these uh, screw terminals, so then it's really easy to uh, use it. And I think uh, it's also good in lab environments, especially if you have a, some kind of DIY lab or a lab at the university or something like that, where you usually have your signals coming from some loosely hanging wires. So then you can just uh, yeah screw the wires in these uh, screw terminals and everything works just fine. So that's that. And if you remember from my previous video, then I mentioned that I specifically designed uh, the dimensions of this PCB after the dimensions of this uh, enclosure, because I can perfectly fit this uh, inside. And then uh, I can make the circuit completely sealed. It's not like a perfect seal, so it doesn't fulfill any of these IP whatever number uh, ceiling uh, standards, but uh, it's uh, the circuit at least is in a nicely packed environment. And then actually this brings us to these uh, PCBs because uh, what's my goal with these PCBs is that based on the suggestion of one of my viewers, I could use PCBs as front panels and rear panels. So what we have here is that you probably recognize that here comes the USB uh, connector. So what we have here is that this is our front panel. And then obviously you can guess that this is the rear panel and I just put uh, the channels right there. So A0 to A7 and then the top row is the plus or positive. Uh, row and then the bottom row of the screw terminals will be the negative row or the common. And then on both sides I put the website. So if you haven't visited my website and check this link or the link is in the description also so you can click it. And also if you will end up uh, making my uh, PCBs you can and if you don't want to see these uh, texts but I think it's not too irritating you can just flip this and install it uh, on the enclosure like this. And uh, coming back to this uh, PCB, I just want to highlight what I changed as compared to the previous one. So now at the top we have the current version and here is the previous version and you can see that they are almost uh, one to one identical. And actually the only thing I changed, I slightly changed uh, the curving here because here I used a KiCad plugin 
uh, to make the traces curved. Uh, but it caused some issues at some places which you cannot really see but uh, here around this island which is a 3.3 volt island uh, there were a few issues but then here uh, that is much better with the uh, built-in uh, curvature uh, feature of the uh, KiCad but of course they are not uh, equally nice so I would say that uh, the plug-in based uh, curvature is a bit more uh, fancy looking, but I'm still satisfied with this. And then uh, another thing I did is, as you can see here, this is now exposed, similarly as the tabs. So I just uh, have this without the uh, green solder mask, and I just simply have the metal exposed here with a nice uh, silver color. And the same comes to this CS 2024. So that is also changed uh, and then another change is that uh, the U3 text from the corner here went to the other corner and I slightly placed the dot somewhere else and uh, then basically that's all uh, all the other uh, features remain the same and and otherwise yeah I left everything as is so uh, the stencil and everything fits uh, from from this version so of course on my PCB way project site you will not need to worry about anything because actually this is the version which is uh, uh, shared there so uh, you will not uh, need to worry about uh, anything these boards are basically totally compatible when it comes to the uh, placement of the parts I just changed a few things uh, regarding the visuals so if you want to get this board, you can get it from the sponsor of this video, PCBWay. You can simply go to my PCBWay project site and order the PCBs uh, from PCBWay and then they will quickly manufacture it to you either with or without assembly services. And then you can have the same nice uh, data acquisition module that I have. So now coming back to these two parts, let's test them and let's see how they fit. So here we have the housing and uh, you can try it. I will just fix it with two screws because I'm lazy. So this is the final result. You can see that there is a slight gap. Uh, I was a bit generous with the dimensions because I was not sure about the precision and the tolerances and whatever. So as you can see, I could have uh, decreased the gap here by at least one millimeter on these sides, in these three sides, but uh, nevertheless it's still fine. I think it's very nice and it uh, follows the outline of the board very well. Uh, we can install these uh, screw terminals as well, just to see how they uh, go together. So now this is our rear panel and you can see that it looks quite nice, I would say. And of course, we can see the channels there. So A0 is here and A7 is on the other side. So we know that this is the positive uh, row and this is the negative row, so that's nice. And then here we have the front panel. Uh, yeah, just the simple text and the USB connector. And we can test if the cable fits well. Let's see. Yes. There's even a small gap there, so there is no, nothing to worry about. And again, it's in level. I could have increased uh, the radius of the corners maybe, but uh, yeah, it's good enough, I think. But yeah. I think this, this will be fine. And then if we further inspect this thing, then uh, I can compare it with this one. So this is the original metal that I filed and it's uh, more or less overlapping. So yeah, it's okay, I would say. 
And then this is the other one. Of course, the hole on this is much uglier than the machined hole on the PCB way made uh, printed circuit board. So yeah, that's that. But uh, what is worth to highlight here is that uh, five of these boards, so basically five panels, uh, cost five dollars or roughly something like that. So the wall set cost me ten dollars uh, for let's say five uh, units because yeah, this is one pair and I have five pairs. So I could have uh, five uh, panels for ten dollars. And actually, if I would uh, count my hourly rate or something like that, then to make these uh, costs more uh, because it's a very tedious work because I don't have the best tools and you can see that it uh, looks a bit wonky. So <laughs> I just want to encourage you that uh, you should really go uh, for PCB based uh, front panels for your projects, not necessarily for this one, but in general, because uh, it's much better, uh, let's say, effort to price ratio than uh, having these uh, made by you by hand so that's that and of course this is a very simple geometry but uh, one uh, advantage of uh, making PCB based uh, front panels or panels in, in general is that uh, you can play around with the dimensions uh, very well because yeah PCB way can manufacture whatever geometry you put on your PCB. From their perspective, it's just a panel where you need to, or where the tool needs to cut a certain pattern. So that's a rather simple uh, task. And uh, if the panels are not, uh, let's say, extremely large, then their price will be much better than the price which you would pay with your time, let's say, when you uh, produce them yourself by filing and uh, sewing and drilling uh, panels. So yeah, I can really encourage you to uh, go this way. So yeah, now we have this uh, final product, I would say. So I will keep uh, making a few. So if you need one, just uh, contact me and we can discuss the details. But uh, probably it is more easier and uh, probably professional if you go to my project page on PCB Waste website and then uh, they can manufacture this to you and you can only and you only have to upload the code via USB and then it works uh, as intended. So I think I conclude the video here because uh, I just wanted to update uh, regarding mainly the uh, panels and how they look like. So I hope you like this kind of uh, design. You can even order different colors. So if you want, for example, a matte black would look nice, but I just wanted to get them quickly as possible. So I went for the default green option. So I hope you like this project. Please uh, visit my website for more details and see you in the next video.